Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to pickle some Brussels sprouts. Now I was I was very amused to find out that these are referred to as frog balls. But if you haven't seen Brussels sprouts um, and how they grow, this is how they grow. And they're actually on a stalk and there's big leaves that come off of these stems here and kind of cover them up. And then when it's time to harvest them, you go through and you cut off the leaves and the stems and you are left with Brussels sprouts. Now, I did not grow these. I did not. I wish I did. I've had very little luck growing Brussels sprouts, but I think I have figured out the issue. And so next year is my year. Yeah, count on it. But these are going to be, oh, these are going to be just amazing pickled Brussels sprouts. Absolutely love them. So what I'm doing is I have my bowl with some salt in it. Uh, and water, so lightly salted water. I mean, not a lot of salt, just a little bit, right? And cold water. And we're going to cut these in half, and we're just going to drop them in there. So you can either pull them off or cut them off. It's much easier, as you can see, to cut them off. So we're going to do that, and we're going to get all of these into some water. You want to let them soak for at least 15 minutes. Now, I am going to let these soak overnight uh, in some salted water in the refrigerator because uh, that's the time that I have at the moment. I'm going to give the stalks to the pigs. The pigs are going to love them. And then in the morning, we are going to pickle these. It's super easy and it is so good. I'm not going to keep most of these. Um, I am actually going to gift them to a few of our friends who really love them. And I know that they will enjoy them. I'm going to keep a couple jars for myself. But for the most part, I am gifting these. And I am so looking forward to it. But it's just this simple. Just cut them off and then dunk them in the water. And this is going to keep them nice and fresh. And if there's anything hanging out in there, it's going to leave. And it's just super nice. So we will be back when it is time to start sticking these in jars. I will put my recipe down below and uh, a link to the recipe down below. And <clears throat> that way you can print it off and leave it in your books if you want to. It is so good. If you like Brussels sprouts, you will love these pickled Brussels sprouts. So, so good. It is the next day and now we are going to start pickling these Brussels sprouts. So in this pot, I have my brine. And this is water and vinegar. And um, I'm using kosher salt, pickling salt, anything but iodized, iodized salt, okay? Um, and I will have the recipe down below. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to make a couple batches of this, but I just make a batch at a time so that I don't waste any. And now we're going to start stuffing jars. While I have my brine heating up, we're going to fill the jars. And this recipe is super simple, super, super simple. In each one of the jars, you're going to put a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. It's going to add some nice heat to them. Makes them really good. And they look so pretty in the jars. Yeah, okay. But that is the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is add some garlic. Garlic is totally to your taste, okay? but you want to use one to two cloves of garlic per jar. So I have garlic that I keep in the freezer that's already peeled. It's a beautiful thing. Pretty sure I got it at Walmart. Um, and this particular kind is this bag that then has multiple little bags of garlic inside of it, which makes it kind of nice. I mean, you see how that comes so we're going to open these up and we're going to get the garlic in the jars. As you can see, we have the garlic and the peppers in the jars. And so now we're going to start putting in the Brussels sprouts. Yes, we are. This is going to be so good. So I'm still working on bringing the brine up. Give it a stir every now and then. You just want to make sure all that salt gets dissolved, okay? These have all been soaking it's a beautiful thing. And so now we're just going to start stuffing them in jars. This is like the easiest recipe, but it tastes 
So good. Okay, and you want to get them in there. You want an inch head space, so get your fingers in there and push them around. Okay. Now some, we might run across them here visually, but some of these were so small that I did not have them. I just left them whole, which is fine. But if you have them, then the brine definitely gets in to all the nooks and crannies and crevices in the sprouts. Okay. And by the time I get these jars stuffed, the brine should be up to a nice simmer <clears throat> and then we will start adding them to the jars you will water bath can these or if you have a steam canner you can steam can them also and that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be steam canning them mm -mm -mm. okay your fingers go numb the water so cold okay these are gonna be so good very very excited here can you tell i'm very excited Okay, so now I've got my steam canner on the flame, and now I'm just going to start to bring that up to temperature, and I'm going to fill the jars to an inch headspace, kind of work my way around. I fully expect to have to make another batch of brine. I want to see how many jars I fill up with the first batch, so then I can guesstimate how much I will need for the rest of the batch. So now the fun part about these is that they're going to want to sit. You don't want to eat these right away. They need to, whoop, overfilled that one. They need to um, soak in that brine for at least a couple weeks, okay? A couple weeks, and then it will just absorb all that amazing flavor from the brine and the red pepper flakes and the garlic. And it is so tasty and so good it's a great use for brussels sprouts let's say let's say maybe some of your family are not too hot about eating cooked brussels sprouts have them give this a try because this well one of our community members molly says that it's life-changing <laughs> i don't know if i'll own that claim but hey you know what it looks like i'll only need to make one more batch in order to fill these jars. Okay, so let me go heat up another batch of the brine and fill the jars and then we will get to canning them. Okay, we've got the brine in all of these. I'm taking my debubbler and just kind of going down along the outsides, just kind of shaking them up a little bit, making some room. Okay, like this one, I can see I can add just a little bit more of the brine. And this brine will make, it'll, it'll make enough brine for 16 pints. I just happen to have 15. But it'll make enough for 16 pints. Okay, there we go. There we go, I can pull one of those. See, now's the time to rearrange and make it all fit. There you go. Okay, so you want to make sure that you go through and just kind of go down along the sides. And it looks like my steam canner is ready to rock and roll. So we're going to get moving on this. It's the same thing as always. Wipe the rims and make sure that they're free of debris before you put your lids on. So you just want to take a paper towel or a little washcloth and go around the rim. Wipe it clean. You're checking for any defects in the jars and I just found one this one I don't know if you can see it Whoop, come here come here can you see that there you go I just found it so I have to change out that jar which is fine but that's exactly I mean I didn't notice it when I was putting up the jars and so this is an extra great time to make sure that is all double checked also wipe the rims free of debris and then we put on our lids you don't have to heat up lids anymore not necessary okay so we're just gonna put these on there then I have to grab my rings 
And then we can start putting these into the steam canner. It's gonna be so good. Now remember that you wanna put these on finger tight, okay? So literally, your fingers, you don't wanna crank them down because, like we've, we've talked about it a few times in the canning chats, the canning process, what it does is it vacates the air from the jar, okay? So if the ring is too tight and the lid is too tight to the jar, then it can't do its job. And then it doesn't work. So finger tight, that's all we need. Oop, I missed a sprout there. That one will go to the pigs, yes, okay? Okay, so I know my canner is coming up to pressure and so we are going to get these first jars in there. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, so we're gonna Take that off. Always make sure to open it away from you. These are going to process for 10 minutes. So once I get these on there and make sure it comes back up to pressure, we will set our timer for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, time to start taking them out of the canner. Look at that. Stupendous. Yes, they float a little bit. They will settle back down shortly. But that's what they do. Because like any other canning process, during the canning process, they cook a bit. Which has them, you know, they're, they're losing that stiffness from the raw vegetable. So it's absolutely normal and nothing to be concerned about. Okay, we're putting in the second batch. And so shortly I will be starting my timer all over again, but let's get you out of there. Look at that. Those are so pretty. Yes, they are. So those are our pickled Brussels sprouts. Like I said, that's all going to settle right back down again. Oh, there goes a ping. You just can't beat the ping. You really can't. So I hope that you guys enjoy these. Remember that there is a link to the recipe down below. And remember to let these sit for at least two weeks before you try them. It's going to be difficult, I know. But it's so worth it. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until the next time, be safe.